Hi, I'm Jeremy, and yeah, it's all gone. I know. Get over it. I did it myself this morning. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Soft. But skipping over that very creepy beginning, I want to start out today with the news that Pierce Morgan officially will not be deported. The White House, of course, after a petition on that website, actually reaches a certain amount. They are obligated to respond to it. And they responded by saying, you're kidding, right? The ironic part of the response was an obvious lie that they kind of began it with saying that the president believes in the Second Amendment, but he also believes in the first. The lie, of course, being that the president believes in the Second Amendment. Speaking of Pierce Morgan, Alex Jones of the Alex Jones Show and Infowars.com and all that, he was invited on to the Pierce Morgan Show because he apparently was one of the perpetrators of that petition to get him out of the country. But if you haven't seen Alex Jones' appearance on there yet, it's kind of your fault because YouTube's front page has been showing it every day for the last couple of days. But I'll remedy that by linking you right around here and down in the doobly-doo below for you to uh, catch up on some current events. And then right below that link, there's another link to Infowars.com where Alex Jones' people found the very next night on CNN that Pierce Morgan and his guests were joking about shooting Alex Jones kind of flippantly and, and, and without regard for the tastelessness of their jokes. Now, uh, if those of us on one side of the fence have to, you know, repent for our senseless jokes, perhaps they should be accountable as well. That could just be the equality in me talking, not the uh, Obama equality where we take from uh, people and give to other people, but the actual fair treatment of all people, regardless of their place on the spectrum. Moving on, but staying in Britain, of course, because it's a very British day. I don't know why. But there's a young man over there by the name of Luke Harwood, who was 18 years old. He was bouncing around group homes over there. He was apparently accused of rape in the last several months, and falsely, it came out that he was falsely accused. But that didn't deter the brother of the girl who was accusing him and four of his friends to go out and senselessly beat and murder and conspire to dismember this young man because, well, you know, they thought he was a rapist. I will go so far as to say that it's because the media over there declared the boy a rapist, not because he was actually a rapist. That's kind of the hardest story I wanted to talk about today. So we're going to continue our world tour from Britain over to Russia, where Moscow is reporting that over in the Siberia region, we talked about the old lady who killed a wolf that was on her land with a hand axe and her bare fist, which was awesome. But apparently it's a systemic problem where the wolves are actually hunting uh, horses and reindeer and, you know, save the reindeer. Uh, so Russia is trying to recruit hunters from around Russia and maybe around the world to go out there and go hunt the wolves and clean up the problem that they can't seem to solve themselves. Wolves up in inhospitable Siberia, very much like inhospitable Western United States, get particularly vicious, very predatory and kind of overly predatory. So they're, uh, they're really worried about that problem. You know, hide your kids, hide your wife, because uh, they're eating everybody out there. So now that world tour we're taking is going to go down to China, where the Weibo service, which is very much like our Twitter service in every other part of the world, except the state-run censorship propaganda department, they, they are able to influence Weibo to take people off and, and take off posts and, you know, just basically regulate it the way that uh, the good red communist Chinese would like it to be. But one of Weibo's managers this past week went out there and posted this ranty blog post on Weibo to inform the users who keep complaining to him and complaining to him about being censored and deleted and their posts getting knocked off and whatever. He, he, he ranted about how they should appreciate the fact that they don't use some kind of automated service to just censor out words or whatever or, you know, delete accounts 
that that you know incur too many penalties. They have they employ real people to go in and review it on a case by case basis. And you know all these people know the the good communist way of thinking, so they take care of it and they erase what they need to erase and edit what they need to edit and you know that's that's the way they do it it's it's not inhumane it's not automatic it's it's legit because if you don't say what the good communist chinese government says over in china well they don't really give you flying pigeons rear end they uh, just want to shut you up and they will but jumping the Pacific Rim all the way back over to America from China, we're going to talk about Texas because, well, we're in Texas and I, I like talking about Texas. And it's continuing that whole free speech, freedom of privacy thing that I'm doing today. And hello, Tempe. How are you? Great. Wonderful. I love you. I love you. But a young woman in the Northside Independent School District of San Antonio, Texas, just lost a court case today pertaining to the fact that the school that she is at, a, a particular magnet school, a, a desirable place to be for those of you who don't know magnet schools versus regular public schools or whatever, the school has required RFID badges where basically this little badge broadcasts a tiny uh, radio frequency that is uh, identified as the person who is wearing it, and they track the movements to make sure kids are in their particular classes on time and not tardy, and it helps increase funding for the school because they know all of their students are on time to classes, or not on time to classes, as the case may be. But Andrea Hernandez was not having any of that noise because she felt that this RFID thing is the, quote, mark of the beast, as described in the 13th chapter of Revelation, if I'm remembering my facts right. Which, if you don't know the book of Revelations, talks about the mark in the hand or in the forehead that processes all business transactions and is replacing money and all of the bad things that are associated with that. But that is a really scary thing to think about for a 15-year-old, so she is conscientiously objecting it on religious grounds, and they are still requiring it, and she is losing it so far in court over it. So that begs the question, is that too far? Even, even you know, negating the biblical argument for it, is RFID tracking a little bit too much for a school where, you know, you have to weigh the individual privacy rights of the student, which doesn't end because they're a child or a student. They are still a person and a citizen in the United States, so they deserve a certain degree of privacy and should expect a certain degree of privacy. I think. What do you think? Comment down there. It's kind of a good place to hang out and we can talk and stuff after I'm done talking to you here. I, I, I like continuing the conversation. So, you know, go down there, talk about stuff. But of course, thank you for tuning in. I am Jeremy. That is my kid. She is great. And until next time. Be well. <laughs> What's that all about? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs>